Alrighty, in this video I'm going to talk about how to create a little bit more of an unconventional control system for various objects for animation. Um, and the way that I'm setting this up is partially using joints, but not in the normal way. So I can grab these joints and move them around, um, but these are not actually uh, bound, the skin is not actually bound to these joints. Um, the joints are bound, binding rather, the joints uh, are controlling this curve and this curve has uh, a thing called a curve warp deformer between that and the mesh um, and that allows us to get this different approach to rigging this type of object um, that is a little bit smoother for something like this that's like kind of like a cord or uh, or whatnot without having to uh, go completely insane with the weight painting uh, and have like hundreds of, of joints or, or whatever. Um, so how did I make this? Well, let's uh, kind of do a little step by step here. Um, I'm going to hide everything. And I've already taken the liberty of having a duplicate of all my geometry here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is create my curve. So I'm going to go create curve tools and create um, a CV curve tool. And I'm basically just going to like snap this. Now I might turn on actual snapping and then like snap each point to a different, uh, you know, to the outside of my mesh, so it's going exactly up the middle, and eventually I'll get up here towards the top. Now it's a little hard to see, oh, actually the this cylinder actually just ends right up here. So I'll just put this one um, up a little bit higher than the other ones, just to kind of overshoot that a little bit. And then I'll hit enter. Now, since I was snapping, that's going to be on the... Oh, oh no, it's on that side. Okay. Um, I do want to fix this, so I'm going to modify center pivot and then just hold down V and snap that uh, to the middle. Or I could look from the top and, and do it that way a little bit more efficiently. Bam. Now we're upside down. Um, so, I might also freeze transformations on this, just because. Um, so now what I can do is I can grab this, and then grab the geometry, and say curve warp, and there's no options. Now, be careful, because for some reason, this curve warp only appears in the deform menu if you are in modeling. If you're in rigging, it disappeared for some reason. And it may be an animation as well. Um, now, of course, you could ignore the menus completely and just uh, instead hold down the space bar and then look for to form, and then you can find the curve warp there. Um, and you can see the node for that if you click on the curve and then look in the attribute editor. And if I go into control vertex mode, now we can see that this is already doing that. I do have soft select on, I believe, so that's making it look a little bit better than if it wouldn't. But um, the other thing uh, that I discovered about this is that in this node for the curve warp, if you turn off this keep length, then the mesh will not um, bend away from or it won't pull away from the ends of the curve. Um, the other thing I discovered, which I would have to read up on the help docs to know exactly what this means, but even if this is on and you increase the length scale, now it does the same thing. What the difference is between those two, I am not entirely sure. But um, So I do want to keep that so that uh, this stays attached to the curve. Now, um, why do we need to create joints? Well, because I can't animate just on a curve. 
you know, I can't, I can't be animating just by grabbing control vertices and keying them. Um, so what I'm going to do is create a very basic skeleton. I'm going to probably do the same snapping thing I just did, honestly. And go here. Like maybe here. Here. And then up at the top. Um, now, if I don't like how those are spaced out, I can still like adjust, hit D, and then adjust the pivoting of them. And then I am going to do a run an orient. Actually, I'll put these in the middle first, like I did with the curve, and then run my orient. And then, this sounds weird, but I'm actually going to unparent all of these joints from each other and make them no longer in a hierarchy. So, they are now just all free-floating separate joints. Um, and I'm going to grab all four of these, and then I'm going to grab my curve. And this may blow your mind, but you can go to skin, bind skin, and just... Uh, bind to a curve to the joints. Um, you can't weight paint this or anything. There are there are other ways to change it, but um, basically it'll it should look fine right off the bat. Now um, we can see what happens uh, if we put these back in the hierarchy. Just you know, because you never want to take it for granted. Uh, so you might want to see what happens, but in my opinion, I mean this this may be um, more you uh, more straightforward. But what's going to happen is um, anywhere where there's just a long distance between joints, this is going to look kind of like flat and not as it's still going to be smooth, deforming smoothly, but it won't be at you know there's still going to be these noticeable. Kind of plateauing areas, um, and so that is why I chose to have mine separated, which of course may become a little bit more tedious to animate, um, but it allows me to get the look that I want, so that's the important thing. And anyway, so um, I'm not going to go into it right now, but then you could create controls on these so that you don't have to click the joints while you're animating, just grab some NURBS items or whatever, like you normally would do on a rig. And just the last little bit here is that um, all I have to do for these extra pieces is grab the top joint and skin those the same way that you would with anything else. And that is not meant to deform with the curve, so that's uh, looking the way that we want it. And now I can animate this doing whatever. Obviously I have to be a little bit careful that I don't like break this off and have it looking weird, but I probably wouldn't want to do that as part of my pose anyway. Alright, so um, that is my little guide here to this setup. Maybe other people have tutorials about this, but I literally just made this up um, just, now, just today, so um, if anybody knows of a different way of doing something similar or a more efficient way or some little trick I missed, then feel free to let me know in the comments. Alright, that's going to be it. Goodbye, everybody.